everyone, it's Isabella here and welcome back to the channel. So I just got off of work and of course I got the notification. <laughs> Sorry, I got the notification that the WFAB girlies are putting up their episode two. Now from what you guys remember from last week, we reacted to the first episode where they were talking about just themselves as a team, hyping themselves up. And I had the theory that this entire video was going to essentially be a way of slowly introducing them into the view of other people in regards to building their reputation back up. So there's a lot of things and theories that we have. Honestly, comment down below what your guys' theory is now and then see if you guys are right in the middle of this video. But we are reacting to episode two. So episode two was super duper hyped up because they had a cliffhanger on there. And and yeah, I already know, again, many, many times that we have seen anything WFAB related. They hype something up so high and then it's literally nothing. And so I already know that's exactly how it's gonna be. You don't have to tell me twice. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So before you hop into today's video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel and click the bell button down below so that way you'll be notified of every single video I post. Now without further ado, let's get into it. Let's go. It is 30 minutes long, y'all. I'm probably gonna have to slightly speed it up. I'm not too sure, but yeah, let's go. Have you guys like started Literally. learning how like rep support and resistance like yeah, how to mark your charts yeah. and stuff yeah does anybody have issues with it because like i've been taking like the notes like i kind of want to show you guys this like the notes that i take like exactly it tells you how to look for like yeah. a strong support and resistance like right there and that so like for example i'll show you this page i literally mark down like what higher highs and higher lows mean so like here if you have like a distance line because it's higher than these it's higher than like this high mm -hmm. right it came down to retest mm -hmm. but you only look for these patterns when it's on the support or resistance lines not like in the middle of the charts right mm -hmm. so for the head and shoulders it's supposed to be the head is supposed to be above the resistance lines and the shoulders in right yeah okay i wouldn't say that i feel 100 percent confident in teaching people just yet maybe the basics like the basics 100 percent. i know that i can teach people but you know it is very um it is it, it's a lot of information. There's a lot of tricks. There's a lot of tips. There's a lot of like little things that you have to pay attention to. So um, at the current moment that I'm in right now, I believe really started to learn how to trade within the last few months. I can, I definitely feel comfortable and confident in teaching the basics to people, but anything advanced, not yet, but it will come soon. So Daniela, are you on the crypto challenge? Yeah. Did you hear about Sarah? Sarah? No, look at this. Hold on. Sarah, yeah, I saw that in the chat. Me? Oh, that's wild. Bro, yeah, she made so $500 trading. No. I saw her in one day. Only, it was in one day. She made 500 bucks wow. in one day. She literally joined this head. No, she just would look at a chart and see like squiggly lines and shit. And then she's showing me today from like everything that we're learning that she's yeah. like making money. That makes me so happy. And she said it was from the... That's a big question. I want to see where my heart wants to go with that. I feel like this mm -hmm. entire business has completely like... You, like if you knew me two years ago, like that's a different... Like I'm telling you, like completely different mentally, spiritually, financially, in every single aspect, I'm a different woman. And it, I thank WFAB for that. I always say WFAB saved me. It saved me from a lot of things in my life. It saved me from the depression. It saved me from- Let's pause this, because this is something that I think that we need to talk about for sure, is cult mentality with a lot of MLM companies, but specifically now in individual teams. Individual teams, I think, were created for a more elevated experience in regards to multi-level marketing companies. And the problem is, though, is I think it simply adds to the cult issues. We literally have it to where their main obsession in regards to cults is getting a new member. I'm just saying that's what I see with them. We see in regards to cults trying to mimic very similar lifestyles, aesthetics, trying to be, again, very cohesive, talking with people inside of the company or cult, and that's it. That's personally what I see. And it's also even more weird to me because they're talking about how WFAP saved me. And one, I could call that complete BS, but two, putting that out there is trying to give the illusion that they, this team is a family. It can save you. And I know later on in this episode, they're going to be talking about some specific things that might be confusing to some people. And I actually want to give a good preface to this by saying, if you guys are new to the WFAP concept, I highly recommend you guys watching my WFAP playlist where actually they literally left from Monet to iGenius. And the way that they did it was absolutely terrible. The way that they reacted to their downlines, literally finding out last minute was absolutely terrible. They pretty much left a lot of people in the dust. I'm gonna be honest with you here. So it was pathetic to say the least. And with that, their reputation was pretty burnt to hell. And even with this now, they're trying to build it up more. And so that's what I think this is doing because a big aspect of that was they shit on a lot of people from what I saw and then treated other people very badly. I spoke to many people specifically personally who were treated horribly by these individuals just from what I could see. I didn't agree 
agree with the, how they were speaking to people, how they treated people according to how much money they were making, etc. That was just my inference on what I was witnessing from these people. So they're trying to build up their reputation still. They're trying to be like, WFF save me, WFF is a family, look at us all working together, look at like bullshit. It literally, we have too many examples at this point on my channel of the macking the exact opposite, not in front of a public camera, but on a private Zoom call. From mediocrity, it saved me from living an unfulfilled life because there's nothing I've ever done in my life that's more fulfilling than being able to grow and being able to help others grow and see it. Like you see people come in here and just grow so much confidence, like get such a bit better picture of themselves, like start to see themselves more. You see people come in here and come from being shy and insecure and unhappy to like this glowing, vibrant person that's now not only elevating in their life, but like inspiring so many. Yeah, no. Yeah, fuck no. First of all, every MLM has massive failure rates. How is someone gonna glow from losing money, dumbass? Of course, not to even mention, we have hundreds of dollars that's spent up front, close to thousands even, because they do recommend the higher expensive packages. And then also monthly fees. So again, when your bank account is getting drained, Dre, in what fucking world are you gonna be glowing and excited and feeling empowered. I'm gonna feel like shit if I'm losing money because that's what most people do. That is just the truth and reality of it. But it bothers me too because if anything, they're trying to focus on the culture and aspect of WFAB. And I do not for a second with how many times I've watched these people move, how they have spoken to individuals, I do not for a second believe that they truly treat people good. I don't. I think this is all a money game and it just, it blows my mind how they have the audacity to hire a videographer to film this shit in hopes that it will make them look better. No Numbers don't lie for one, but not to mention the history of what so many commentary channels have reacted to in regards to content from these people. It's broad, it's bad. For example, Adre over here is literally blaming people for losing money in MLMs. Many of these other people have tried to say, you're broke because you choose to. These are statements that many of these individuals have literally made. I've watched them before. And it's absolutely upsetting to me because now all of a sudden they're these good people that care about you. But when they get caught, they just blame it as we're the negative ones. It's wow. Other people, you see people coming from working from, uh, sorry, living at home with their parents to moving out. Like all these, like, you see people go through these entire transformations just by association. And I think people don't realize that WFAB is not just network marketing. WFAB is not just a product. WFAB is not just a company. WFAB is a movement to empower people. WFAB is not a company at all. Like WFAB is not a company, weirdo. That's that's not how that works. <laughs> like WFAB is not a company. If, if it's just a team, it's not a company per se, but whatever. Again, this is simply hyping up the entire concept of this and trying to make it so appealing that some people will join, but no, people will look at this and see this as enticing and not understand the entire curtain being removed. And there's money loss, there's struggle, there's manipulation, there's so many other things that go on behind scenes. That's what it's about. It's a movement to move and impact as many people as possible. And we're not stopping at network marketing. There's a lot more that we got planned. Yeah, I made a hundred bucks the other day and then I spent it on my lashes. <laughs> <laughs> The culture here really makes people feel safe. When I came in and I got exposed to this whole different world, like literally, it's a whole different world. You ever seen that show? What's it called? That show that is like, um, um, it's like an underground world with like this spooky alien thing or whatever. You know that show? Stranger Things. This is like the Stranger Things except... <laughs> You did not. But oh, I actually love, I love, you see how fucking bad they are at marketing off their stuff. Terrible. Because when you just compare your own movement to Stranger Things, you mean to tell me a shit world and then the opposite world is still shitty? Where people get lied to about what's happening in the real world and then there's an underworld that's even, 
Really? I am very, yeah, I would actually agree with that. It's a shit show, except for you guys don't have as good of a ratings as Stranger Things. Also, let's backtrack a little bit to what she was just saying. She talked about how you feel safe. That is their goal. That is, in my opinion, love bombing. Love bombing, again, is where they try and make you feel as comfortable, safe, and secure, and loved as possible once you get into this movement, because that is how they want to try and keep you. Because people get attached to that type of treatment. That's how some people actually feel connected connected to shitty relationships sometimes because they sit there and remember the good times and the times that they were treated nicely at once and that's it even though it starts progressively getting worse and that's what we do see a lot of the times with these teens it gets progressively worse also I would like to really point something out here because I think we all need to look over the entire group of people that are in this do we see people that are not decked out in designer no do we see people who are like not done up because look at this for example we have people who have jewelry on okay we have people who have lash extensions which are expensive. We have people who have like hair that we have people who look like they're spending a decent amount of money on their parents, right? The average person that is joining I Genius is not looking like that, okay? And there's nothing wrong with that, please. That there's nothing wrong. However, there's a reason why there is people that have a specific aesthetic and look that are in this video. Why aren't they showing other people here who are brand new and maybe don't have the look? That's because in my opinion, they only focus on people with the look and that's what they're gonna show off in videos like this. In a good way, like instead of it's underground, it's upgrade. It just really goes to show like there's just so much out there in this world that people don't even know about People don't even realize because they haven't put themselves out there. They haven't tried anything new They haven't stepped out of their comfort zone. So when I got into W5, I had like I, I was on a different team and um, I, I, I Didn't have like that kind of support that I wanted I didn't have the kind of proper training that I was looking for and you know I'm that kind of person that's like all in die hard or don't try at all when I found W Fab, like I, I, it really went to show like what proper guidance, what proper training, what culture, what um, um, getting around. I hope everyone that comes across this comes across this and sees how ridiculous this is. And if you are someone that is curious about joining W Fab, I really, re really recommend you looking through the comment section and all the other videos about W Fab from not only my channel but a lot of other people's because you're gonna get a beautiful spread of examples and people with different perspectives that are gonna point out some things that I might not be able to point out because they're good at showing off what you want to see. But that's the problem though is people who don't know a lot about this situation, W Fab, MLMs in general, this does look very appealing and that can be very potentially dangerous. So again, if you are new here, I really, really recommend you to look at other stuff. I know they label it as just hate. When you see people like I have in regards to these leaders who choose to lie continuously, mislead people all the time from literally what we have been able to physically prove, this is not a representation of them in my opinion. A real representation of them is the other footage that is not perfectly filmed all the time. The right people can do for you and your business because I didn't have success for a whole year. A whole year of me just like throwing shit against the wall, trying to figure it out, trying to like, you know, my head was spinning in circles. And then when I joined W5, like all I was building, I literally went off. Like I built that momentum. I took off. I like I'm living proof that when I came in, I used that training. I used that support. I used that mentorship and I took off right away within my first month. Right? Like I started having massive success within my first month because I took advantage of it. I saw the opportunity, I saw what was on the table and I just went Okay, again, I would like to remind you, what they're sharing in regards to success, we don't get to see the full amount of success. Do we know numbers in regards to MLMs? Yeah, but we don't see the money that they put in versus getting out. We don't see that. So when they say they're doing good, sure, they look like they're doing good. But again, remember, they pulled that same thing when they were in Monet. For months, for months, they went on and on and on about how successful they were. All of them that came from Monet were dropping ranks. Jasmine, for example, dropped like eight ranks, but she still kept coming on saying, she was successful. She was great. She was so fortunate. She was making great money, but it was a lie. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, but this is this is played up. <laughs> I don't know why I use that sound, but you know what I'm saying. I just went. I just took it. I took what I took what was available. I took what was offered to me, and it works. It works. You know, it's it's probably the best thing that's ever happened to me, to be honest. I think that there's time where I'm like doubting myself, where I'm like questioning things where I call Jazz or I call somebody else on the team and we talk about it, we uh, we talk, like different people talk and just like, you, you, some, that's the whole point. If you were, not trust me, I, I don't, you were, but I know a lot of you guys are not entrepreneurs.
entrepreneurs on your own, it's fucking hard. Yeah. It's so fucking Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You want to know something, though? You can make friendships outside of MLMs and be have support. Literally, when I tell you, for example, Deanna and Chelsea, I've known them for so long. They have talked me through things. They have helped me in regards to my mental health. Not, not one of them benefited from that. Late night calls, FaceTimes, advice texts, you name it, just to help me out. You can get that without it. You can be a successful person and get support at the same time without being in an MLM. They're trying to give the vibe that you can only access this type of love, acceptance, and support through them. And that is bullshit. There are so many incredible creators or people that you can meet where you can literally grow together, believe similar things in regards to like what you want to go after, still be unique and get that kind of support. So yes, being an entrepreneur is hard. One, you're not an entrepreneur though. So you don't know that fucking half of it. But all I'm saying is you don't need that to have that support. It's hard because you go through the same emotions, but you're alone. Yeah. So when you're feeling like shit, Who's gonna, who's there to give you a pep talk? Who's there to give you a better perspective? Who's there to tell you? Your fucking friends. Who's gonna support you? Do you think that every entrepreneur does it all alone? Do you think everyone is just on a lonely road to success? No, look at all these other popular people in regards to like business owners, entrepreneurs. If they celebrate their success, for example, they host parties with their friends that support. What the fuck is this? Keep going nowhere. Yeah. You literally just fucking, you quit. Yeah. It's so that's why most entrepreneurs fail. Yeah. That's why what we have is so beautiful because we have each other. So when you're feeling like that, you need to talk about yeah. it. Yeah. And, and, and get support. Get yeah. around the right people. Get around whatever. Because I promise you, everything that you are going to go through, we've already gone through. Or yeah. somebody that yeah. has more success has already gone yeah. through. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. even like a few weeks ago, you came to do your lashes, and uh, I was talking to her about something I was going through. Hey, quick question. You hear the noise in the background? Who's putting the dishes away while they're having their family talk? Who's who's putting the dishes away? Isn't it a family meeting? Or was it the girl who cooked you dinner and now you're talking at everyone else but you're letting her? Who's doing the dishes? Wow, family. <laughs> She's talking about also talking to other people and getting encouraged to keep going. Here's the difference between legit friendships and being an entrepreneur versus being in an MLM and having friendships inside the MLM. With me, whatever I create has no effect on my friends, right? No effect. A lot of the things we do are pretty different or the, some of the pursuits that we want. I'm very thankful because we are similar but yet different. Meaning, I can message them and say, I'm struggling and they will flat out tell me if it's a good thought or a bad thought. And they will help clear up if I am being down on myself or not. It's not, it is not information control. It is telling you what you need to hear in regards to whether it is hard truth or just, oh no, you're okay. You see what I'm saying? Whereas this, if you have friendships in regards to an MLM and all these friendships depend on each other in regards for doing well. We have seen our geniuses comp plan and in order to grow in any of these companies, you need to recruit. In order to grow in this company, you need to recruit. And so therefore, what do you think your upline is gonna tell you when you message them? You're fine, it's fine, everything's good. Everything is going to be literally like, you're not alone, everything's normal. You're probably never gonna get an answer of, you know what, that's actually not okay. Let me help you out. Or, you know, you don't have to stay in this. No, because their success is dependent on you. Whereas I can go to talk to my friends. I'm gonna get the real hardcore truth. Am I gonna get support, even if it's tough love? Absolutely. But am I gonna know exactly what's right and be helped on with that situation? 100%. Am I gonna get told with what, I, what that what I'm dealing with is wrong? Absolutely. This, I do not believe you're gonna get that. I was doing this, or kept my emotion to myself and didn't share it with somebody else yeah. We get to really do life together, like, and it's not a joke. Like, I don't know. It's hard to put words on things that you live. Cause I, I go. To, it's, it's hard to explain. But we go through life together. We grow together. We've, we're not gonna always agree. Uh, you know, we're gonna experience some things. We're gonna go through stuff. We're gonna overcome them. We're gonna win. We make some money. Like, it's a lot of ex a lot of emotions, a lot of experiences. Overall, I'm just really grateful that I was able to manifest this team into my life. Um, Cause I know that it's by surrounding yourself like pe with people like this that you're able to get to the next level in life because if you're around people that are negative that don't have goals that are not like-minded you will be the sixth one um and i understand how important it is to that to on the, like you are literally the average of the five people you hang around with the most right and it's important to make sure that you 
are yourself 100%, up, like this is who I am, and I work hard and I show up every single day, therefore I think that I, I take a good part in this team too, like you know we all have our part to take, um, because of how we show up, how serious we are, and how dedicated we are to our success and to the team's success. I was exposed to it, I saw the bigger picture, I saw the vision, I understood it, and I was like, wait, this makes sense. This is a people's industry, this is the only industry, guys, I've, I've worked jobs, <laughs> trust me, I've worked many jobs, and there's not one single job that allowed, that pushed me to become a better person. Whereas here, this is all we do, like, we get Oh my god. If I sat down a group of third graders and interviewed them about life experiences, I would probably get 10 times more information and you know, like, oh fuck, that's a good idea than this. Like, now right now she's talking about how she's been in so many jobs and the only job that ever really pushed her to make herself better was this. One, that's very, very ridiculous of you to state also because acting as if no job offers any sort of motivation or helps make you a better person I think is ridiculous and also highly disrespectful I think because we, th we can look at so many different jobs for example and so many people could be in like maybe you're a nurse maybe you're a content creator this shit's changed me in beautiful ways also i would like to add you don't need a job to change yourself you don't need a job to want to go after more things like that that's not what's going to change you from being somebody who is like oh i don't go after things or maybe i don't believe in myself too now i believe in myself like literally i started believing in myself 10 times more because i worked on that now not specifically though because of content creation no it was because of me if you've been changed by this sick okay great but again that is very ridiculous to be like no other job could do that together we grind we read books we get on personal development calls like we really work hard and we have fun, like again i know you guys grind and hang out together but it looks like it's a main specific group of people meaning there's a specific click and then there's a shit ton of downlines that are kind of kind of you know doing good some of them might be popping off but most of them are just there they get to hear the zoom calls and that's about it most people are not in this group they don't get to experience all this stuff so again this is not a family at all and you know sometimes the thing is is that you want to like talk about it, right? You wanna talk about how it's great, how it's amazing, but then it looks like you're showing off. But then you don't you do not do it enough and then you're like, oh, but you know, this is not even true. It's not even real. So it's like, what do you want me to do at this point? When I talk about it too much, I'm showing off. When I'm not talking about it enough, it's fake. So, you know, it's just like, the ones who get it, get it. The ones who don't, don't. You know, this is not meant to be for everybody, but if it's for you, well, be ready to be on for a hell of a ride because this is gonna change your life. And I really hope so because it changed mine and I'm only getting started. So keep watching. <laughs> Hi. How are you? I'm good. How's your leg? Yeah. It's good. It's so good. Bro, you're never gonna believe who texted me. Who texted you? Yes. No. No. Okay. What? I'll be right back. She said he has August. Like as if nothing happened. It's the audacity for me. I just can't. I just what I'm like having a hard time understanding is like how can you not see what you created here? Like. Like she didn't make it about you. You know what I mean? It was about everyone. And I feel like like the situation is just like, it's just clearly not. If you guys remember, again, this is why I recommend everyone to go watch the WFAB series in regards to the downfall of the WFAB because what had happened was there was a top leader in regards to WFAB and Monet. She pretty much outed everyone and said, Jasmine and other leaders are jumping ship and none of their downlines know. That is not right. That is really fucked up. And you're not even informing anyone. Yeah, that was wrong. So everyone in regards to downlines and other people in Monet lost their shit. They totally lost their shit because they're like, why are you not telling us? Why are you sneaking around? WFAB girls at the idea to be pissed at other people for disrespecting them and not trusting them with their decisions even though they're pretty much their life and lifestyle was falling apart. I also would like to add as well because they left Monet and they pretty much took a bunch of girls with them what in the world proves that WFAB is going to stay strong and good in iGenius? Jasmine used to be a part of quote-unquote iGenius allegedly which was known as Cuvera and then she went to Monet then she's back. 
So what is telling anyone that this is gonna last, by the way? So yeah, they're talking about an individual from what I can see that pretty much called them out on their shit, which was true. She was a co-creator of WFAB or technically like the main creator of WFAB. But anyways, yeah, it was an absolute hot mess. And so they're like, oh, it's the audacity for me for her to text. That's none of my business. I could give a shit about that. Go, go, like, I don't care about that. My point is though, is they're trying to find a way to sneak in and bring up WFAB shit that went down in regards to November, December and on. They treated people badly for how they reacted but the downlines had every right to react react because they were upset that their leaders were literally leaving them and not making them aware of it. That was all alleged, but still, it was a nightmare. It's really not clear to her what she's actually done and how many people that she's hurt and the people that she claimed to love for, for years, you know, and... and Can I also say something? Because if they're talking about who I think they are, uh, are, which was, again, the individual that outed them for being terrible human, they're like, oh, well, why would you ever talk to us? Like, you hurt so many people. Like, you put our business in danger. Like, you you treated people badly even though you said you cared about them. She exposed mistreatment in the team. She literally was the biggest like jump for us in regards to exposing the problems with the W Fab girls. Like we have so much proof in it. Like there's too many videos. Again, all on my channel, I'll have it linked below. So much proof of mistreatment, manipulation, gaslighting, everything about all of this. And she literally took that step and exposed what they were going to do. That's huge. But again, they're the they're the victims. They're the victims in this. Get fucked. Just drag all of us. She has absolutely no idea clearly what she put everyone through. And us aside, like uh, us friends aside, imagine the people in our organization when we we're in money who are struggling in their business now because of all the drama that's attached to it and, yeah. and the brand that we built. And it's just, you clearly don't understand how many people you've hurt in the situation. Whatever. Now they're doing this whole thing of, I mean, what about the people left in Monet? You didn't give a shit when they were upset that you were leaving. Don't pretend that you care. That's what makes me mad. At least be true to being an asshole. That's what I'm gonna think. Don't pretend that you give a shit about a lot of past Monet girls because at the end of the day, you didn't act like it. Not all. To love and care about me, you to love and care about my son, but you're willing to drag my whole reputation, my whole business, uh, which ultimately takes the food off my table, like you were saying. Like, that, like, some, like, we could have never recovered from that. Thank God we did, but we could have not. Is the music so loud? Like, who's editing this? And I'm not trying to be an asshole. I'm, like, genuinely saying, like, turn the music down so we can hear her. <laughs> You know, that was, that was something that a lot of people would have let drown them. Mm -hmm. um, because we, like, the things we went through, being dragged, being publicly humiliated, having to explain ourselves in places we didn't have to. Just, like, move on and just, yeah. But anyways, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get some content with the girls. Hey, babe, have okay, fun. love you. Good. Okay, bye. bye. Okay, what happened? Yeah, so she pretty just pretty much messaged her and said, "Hey, how's August?" Without even asking how she is. That's it. That's all she had to say after all of this. What? Yeah. The transition that we had um, recently, which was three months ago, um, it was really tough, and I I felt like I I know me, and I know that. I have thick skin to a certain point, but seeing my girls go through something like that, something that they've never been through before, where they've been, they were attacked um, verbally through social media, it was like kind of like- Give me a fucking break. Oh my God, where are the tears? Where's the tissue? At least make this realistic. Like, good fuck, I'm sorry, but this is pathetic. I'm like, I cannot stand people who are like, Oh my God, I made this situation. They're like, I made this situation happen, but and it's my fault. No, don't, don't do that shit. You wanted to move because you weren't making money. So you hopped out and did it. One, violating policies and procedures because you cross recruited and we have proof of that. But you literally gaslit people for being upset with you for misleading them. Like what? And then again, don't pull this whole, we, my girls and I were bullied and harassed. We showed screenshots and commented about how fucked up it was that you were treating people wrong. I don't think that's bullying. That's commenting on, hi, why are you treating your downlines badly? I think that's what we always say. A lot of commentary creators, I know I can't speak for everyone, but a lot of us are like, hi, why are you mistreating and lying to your downlines that a lot of them don't know better? Why are you doing that? 
Yeah, because it's ridiculous. So I'm sorry, but when you do stupid things and you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. And when you go through the process of what happened with the Monet girls and WFAB, with the way that they approached it, of course people were gonna react to it. And it blew up in a way that people were very upset with the treatment. And a lot of people were like, oh yeah, I've seen them before. I believe they're scammers. And at the end of the day, it brought more awareness to WFAB in a way of avoid them. That's just my opinion. Again, I can't really fully say what everyone believes but I don't truly think that everyone just loves them right now by any means. Like bullying, I would say um, it hurt me a lot and I, I never knew that we would receive that much backlash. <clears throat> Hear that? Come a little bit closer. Mm, I don't give a fuck. Stop with the poor me shit. And I understood that everybody was emotional about the breakup i would say um a lot of people use their emotions and not logic and I, I feel like what we went through definitely built us up to where we're at today and that's the reason why we are so much more confident we are so much more bolder because we went through um heartbreak that was a very painful moment. I'm just really happy that we were able to just stay close while all of that was happening. We never even got a chance to really share our part of the experience with the world because we just stayed quiet because there was just so much. We beyonce on the you know? Don't talk about nothing. No, you had a chance. They had a chance. They had a Zoom call that they hosted with all their downlines, but we reacted to it and the way that they responded was bad. They also found out that like they knew that we were on there. They had an opportunity to respond well. They had an opportunity to hold themselves to a higher standard to be mature. And it was bad. And again, you can watch it. It was rough. So they had an opportunity to address things. They have platforms. Had a Zoom call that they could have spoken to their team kindly. No, that shit happened. And that was their own fault. Don't respond to nothing. That's what we did because it was a lot, a lot of negative energy. And it was really hard on a lot of us and I, I know the world doesn't see that because we still show up we still work we still thrived we still ranked we still we still put in work and i was personally battling a lot of emotions like i called my therapist i was like girl we need to talk like my anxiety level hasn't been that high since i went through my depression two years ago as soon as that whole situation happened as soon as the transition happened it was like this it, it felt like overnight it went from people loving me and supporting me and cheering me on to overnight people hating me, people saying that I'm a bad person and pe people talking poorly of me. And people have always talked poorly about me, but they didn't. They never knew me. It was online. It was the brand, the anti-amalamers, the brand ambassadors. They didn't know the real me, so it never really affected me because they don't. They don't know me. But some of these people really. Or I thought at least that they really knew me. I thought they knew my heart. I thought they knew my intentions. There was people that like really like like I shared my heart with. I poured my heart into. I poured my soul into. And so it really hurt. It, it was really painful. To yeah, no. This is called gaslighting. In the Zoom call when they were addressing everything originally to their downlines. Dre specifically said how she loved everyone and she was kind of sad and other people mentioned how they were kind of sad how they were being treated after they poured into so many people. You do a bad thing and then that person out of of course natural human instinct reacts up, up, upset because they were mistreated but then your response is well i poured into you well i did all these things to you so therefore they their emotions are invalid like again i want to make this clear i don't wish bad things on them these people do i wish them to pull their heads out of their asses and stop scamming 100 percent. would i be very happy if these people start actually did legit things and completely had nothing to do with MLMs, yeah, would I be wary about them for a bit? 100% though. I do want better things for them, but I'm also not gonna, at the end of the day, excuse their bullshit. And it makes me mad how she's like, I poured into people. You did, but at the same time, that doesn't exempt you from criticism. Because for example, if I could do a nice thing for my friend, but then I turn around the other day and I talk shit on them, that nice thing doesn't cancel out the bad thing I did. You can't hold that over someone's head. To, to receive that from, from, from those people. My thing is like, there was so much negativity created in mm -hmm. such a positive space that we took, you know, mm -hmm. W5 has created yeah. in, in these years and just 
all like crushed from all that negativity. Yeah. 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 The first time I called the police right me. away, I was like, what was happening? What is that? Well, I just didn't like that she used the platform to promote hate. We were all shocked. She called me, we called Ashley, the three of us yeah. were on FaceTime. I'm like, girl, did you see that? And I was like, girl, yes, I did. It's also like a reflection of someone's true colors. Like, you can make it all you want, but then as soon as you get triggered, you're gonna go on your stories to blah, 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 blah. Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, I didn't know any, I didn't know her at all. But to watch you, and watch you, and watch you. I almost died in a car accident. And everybody go <laughs> watch that. Because I was sad. It's also like, a business and mm -hmm. there's people like, like that. So yeah, they're blaming the other person for pretty much exposing their ass. My thing is, is if you don't want to be exposed for being a shitty person, don't be a shitty person. Daniela and us, me, you, that we were like in her downline. Like we were like, yeah. we were looking up to you at, yeah. uh, to her at some point and now we see this and it's like, yeah. Like, and because of that, because she was like, a, you know, a leader and a big figure, like a lot of people just took that like as being the truth. Yeah. So yeah. we got, we received messages of us like having to explain what was going yeah. on to yeah. people and it's like not even a, I have nothing to do with this situation. Yeah. Yeah. It, for me it's hard because I feel like once I love someone, I'm always gonna love them. So I, I'll always have love for her in my heart, but like that doesn't mean that it was okay because I know it hurt a lot of people. Yeah. It's giving me emotion. <laughs> oh, I love you. Yeah, it really, it affected Because it triggered, like it triggered, it triggered so many things. It wasn't just us. Like you could have affected just us, but it wasn't just us. Even people that stayed, my girls that stayed in the company, yeah. they got fucked over because people were like, I don't want to associate myself with this yeah. drama that you guys are involved in, that yeah. you guys were involved in. Like it's not- Yeah, no. This, that is not how this actually went down. I'm sorry, but this is disgusting for you to use other people's experiences and suddenly claim the, I'm the big sister that feels bad and I'm so sorry and be protective. Fuck that. If you wanted to be protective, you could have actually handled the shit properly. Maybe you don't mislead people. That's another, I'm sorry, this is ridiculous. Not only affecting us, it's affecting a lot of other people. And that was, that was really fucking hard. But at the end of the day, like you said, like, no, like everything happens for a reason and, and it's like we were purging like you like you said we were yeah. purging we were literally purging the energies that weren't there for us and it showed and i understand that like all the action and, and that's how i see it it's like i'm not hate i'm not like mad at it because i see it as just she was in pain and everybody else that acted out was in pain but my thing is is like if you're gonna leave w fab for anybody it's not specifically her yeah. but if you're gonna leave w fab just know that every single person who came into this team and actually gave their energy, actually like worked at this, they left with something. Whether it's their confidence, whether it's like the entrepreneurial spirit, whether it's like now they're thriving in whatever business they're doing, everybody who touched and witnessed like what we do left better. So if you talk about our team, make sure you can say that. Yeah. Make sure you put some respect on our I would talk about it if that was a common occurrence. I wouldn't have a problem with this shit if we didn't have so many bad experiences, massive failure rates, because then there would be no point in discussing it. But this is a problematic thing in regards to the company, in regards to what they represent. And it's, again, I would like to remind you, the same people that don't take ownership for when people don't do well in the company are the same ones that take ownership when people leave but do well, or are in the company and do well. Like, I'm sorry? Either be consistent or don't. It, it affected me in different ways, I guess. I mean, I was a little hurt from the whole entire situation, especially because, I don't know, I feel like I had nothing to do with it, but but you know, it, it's, it, it is what it is. And you've gotta just take it with a grain of salt and realize that business is always gonna have its ups and downs. So, you know, I don't hold really anything against people. I mean, if that's the way that you wanna react, if that's how you move, it is what it is, right? So I feel like, it's a lesson learned. It was unfortunate. I feel extremely like, you know, bad about how everything kind of went about because that wasn't the intention at all. But I also feel like, you know, it, it's it's people who know our intentions and people who understand what we're doing here, then they would have not been upset. They would have not gotten affected. They wouldn't have like, you know, a switch. Here's the funny thing about intent. You can have good intent, but still do shitty things to people. You can, you can have the intent of being a good person, but your actions still are negatively impacting somebody. And change in personality going from, oh, we love you. Thank you so much for your help to like, fuck you kind of thing. Like, it's like, if you, if you know the, the true intentions of what we are doing in this business, what WFAB is all about, then those things, you know, don't really matter. You know when I started getting apologies? When I went on live and I was like, when somebody changes jobs, yeah. do they get hate for changing a job? Yeah. yeah. But, but like that's
I want to crawl on my own skin. I want to hang my skin on that hanger because ugh, what the fuck are we saying, Dre? People that change jobs don't usually get hate for that. That's not something we see all the time, right? Um, You know, want to know something different though? When your success is dependent on people that heavily, yeah, people are going to be pissed when you leave. I mean, shit, I can't even imagine the uplines of Jasmine and Dre and how much they shit themselves knowing that several hundreds of people probably were leaving Monet from their downline to go to iGenius. That's heavy checks. How do you expect them to be nice and happy about it when you leave and that impacts them. What it is at the end of the day, yeah. you just change companies. Yeah. 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 When has anybody ever been hated for that? Bro, oh, I had a call because yeah. when everything happened, you just answer questions and whatever. Why am I seeing people jump on the call that I haven't seen in the business in six months? I'm yeah. like, yo, like, where are people like, like you're drama. here for just the drama, bro. Yeah. Like, you girls, because you guys yeah. are really strong with all of the hate that we got, but at okay, the end, like, we still yeah. decided to do something because you saw the bigger vi picture and we decided to all follow because we all saw it for yeah. ourselves not because you said yeah. it but because you were able to paint the vision yeah. so we could see it for ourselves and we decided exactly. to go with it no matter what yeah. for to help because you want more people to win because yeah, like yeah, you were saying yeah. you were not the only one winning but you were the only one walking on stage mm -hmm. not everybody mm -hmm. all of us are gonna look walk already on stage. within four or five months three yes. of us four months. speaking and, and then all of us walking oh, on the yeah. stage. So, and so many rent. Remember when we first joined, it was like 18 rent jobs back to back to back. Like, I think what made me the most emotional was um, uh, seeing my girls hurt the most. And, <laughs> and seeing that they didn't deserve what they went through. Heavy. I don't see any tears. <laughs> Not trying to be an asshole. I'm don't do the I don't see any. I again I I think I said this in the past video. I need to see some sparkles in your eyes, bitch. I need to see something. I at least at least like lick your thumbs and drag it down your face so it looks more realistic. Like, I'm just saying. Do something that makes this more realistic. I don't believe that she actually felt bad for her girls because the way that they responded to people and other downlines that were giving her backlash was not in protection of her girls. Cause if so, it wouldn't have been so defensive and rude. Energy. So I, I give the benefit of the doubt to a lot of people and I feel like that's the reason why. Um, it sucks. Sometimes you just let people in and they take advantage of that. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So poor you, Jasmine. I, I, this is a water, a water bottle, by the way, I use this to mist my plants. <clears throat> I feel terrible for you. Um, but you want to know who else I feel bad for? Thousands of people that have lost money underneath you. I love you, friend. I love you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Moving was just, yeah, it was, it's more in line. Like, look at us, where we are right now. It's crazy. To We're be all going to be on together. stage. No, we're not on stage. <laughs> just say if this is actually a good reality tv show wouldn't you get mic'd up wouldn't you get one of those little like mics on your shirt so we could actually hear you i mean if you're gonna buy your own reality show and pay for someone to make this for you you at least got to do it right Thank you so much, Samar, for delivering that value. Get into all of our rank ups. Before I get into that, though, I have um, some people that want to say a few little words here. I'm gonna pass it over to uh, one of the. I'm gonna pass it over to one of the Atandemic speakers, the one, the only. Okay, social media queen, Sabrina. I can't pronounce the last name properly, but it's French, okay? So, la Sabrina, okay, please. Hello! You're friends with someone and you don't know how to pronounce their last name? You're friends with someone, you're close with someone, and you don't know how to say their last name. I think 
that right there is just telling you how bullshit this is. That there's only four days left um, to the first quarter of the year, to the 90 days. You guys know that we're currently running a 90 days run. This was meant for us to focus on our business for 90 days so we could have results within the next couple of months. Because you guys know that in network marketing, it's all about um, what you do right now is gonna impact your business in the next 30 to 90 days. How you end this first quarter so you can start with momentum. The next couple of months are going to be really good for you, but it all it requires you to work and be intentional. There's no other way around it. Um, so yeah, that's it, guys. I'm excited, and I can't wait to see the ones that are going to be there in person to see you guys, and you're going to see me cry and all that good stuff. I love you, family, and I'll pass it over now to... Who are you passing it? Okay, so <laughs> right now, we need some drum roll because we are writing on the stage, Miss <laughs> Jasmine Elizabeth. Wow. <laughs> Who, by the way, has a 40, was it 45 minutes? Or 35 minutes? Uh, uh, it's 20 minutes. Yeah, it's no, 20. it was 30 minutes. It was 30 minutes. Oh, is it? I don't know. She, was a, she don't yeah. even know, it's okay? It's she 30. has a 30 minute segment on on this event. 30 <laughs> minutes. I don't think y'all understand 30 minute segments. She's the only IPA that has a 30 minute segment. Because she's not IPA for long, let me tell you. And it changed everything for me. Every year, I had success. Every year, my income grew. So this is not a joke, you guys. And this is the first network marketing company that has ever had a hybrid event like this. An influencer? Anybody. Anybody. Gets recognized on stage? Are you kidding me? My, the last company that I was in, do you know, I walked down on that stage in my last company, if you guys know that, I was, I was in a... In a in what they said, everyone gets recognized on stage, so what makes it so unique then? What do you have to do then to get there? Do you have to do much? Are they just doing it to give the illusion that everyone's successful when it's not? This is why this is bullshit, and they keep slipping up essentially, trying to make it look amazing when it's pretty much showing what we're trying to prove. In a, in a, in a shampoo company, right? I was at the top of the, comp the compensation plan, I went to um, a, a, the, a, a similar convention to like what we're doing here and I was the only one who walked down that stage and the only thing I thought about was wow I just wish that my team was there with me on that stage that's the first thing you told me when you got off stage mm. that's it was me by myself and all I kept thinking is like damn I cannot wait for my team No, I think you started thinking, oh shit, when you dropped in regards to lots and lots of money and ranks. I think that's when you're like, oh no, we need to move. Not wait for my team to feel this type of emotion, this recognition, this excitement to walk down that stage. And I literally manifested it. Like, look at this. Whoever goes to this event live, and you are a rank, you are walking down that stage. I am freaking mind blown. I am excited. I'm more. Here's another day. I was, I was like, I know. I oh, here's my thought process here. So now we're giving recognition to people, even if they're not even doing that hot. That's still weird. I think that's still manipulative. I still think that's brainwashed. Do I think people deserve recognition for their hard work? 100%. I fully agree with that. However, it rubs me the wrong way when we know the reality of MLMs, but now it's all of a sudden trying to make everyone walk the stage, talk and do everything. I've been writing in my journal for fucking two years. I am so happy and grateful now that I get to speak at the stage on, on GoPro. I am so happy and grateful now that I get to speak on stage at GoPro. I gotta wait till I'm some kind of millionaire <laughs> till I get to go on that freaking stage. And look at God, look at you, look at the universe, look at Source, right? Giving me that opportunity. Get that picture clear in your head because you know that success is whoever is able to convince their mind of a reality that is not currently here. Whoever can convince their mind, whoever can paint that picture better, how much better would you be able to paint that picture if you were able to walk on Eric Worre's stage, bruv? Well, you know, there's power in proximity. You need to be around people who are you're going to learn from, who are goal-oriented, who are doing better than you. It's the only way, it's the main way that you're going to grow, right? So these events are crucial for your growth and I'm so, so excited that W5 is going to be a part of it, and I will be there in person. Over here. Look at us. Look at us. Look at us. Okay, ready? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, wait. Don't burn. Okay, we'll put it on. <laughs> Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Let's go. 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 Let's
the first shout out to our brand new influencer and our host today, people in this team that didn't get to talk in regards to this reality show like they don't look like familiar faces so i would love to ask the previous episode these individuals did talk why haven't they talked in the past two episodes and they're just there do they really value them do they really value their opinions or are they just placeholders to show off people in the group that just looks odd to me um focusing on like meditation is like really big thing for me now like every morning esther hicks i really love her Ooh. People hate what they don't understand. People hate what they don't do. I love that you said women because I don't know any men that are on these anti MLM videos. It's a women bashing motherfucking circle. Okay, anybody that has time to hate doesn't have a fing life. Thank you for promoting the brand for free. <laughs> Haters. Well, we all need them because, I mean, they are our brand ambassadors. It's honestly brought us a lot of business. So, we love the haters. I say thank you for the work that you do for us, okay? Literally brand ambassadors that work for free. Now we get into talking about anti-MLM stuff and creators. Okay, so clearly we can't have a successful reality show without discussing us. Isn't that funny? People that apparently don't hurt them or affect them, they have to highlight consistently. So that's what the next episode is going to be, is talking about us like what the fuck talking about no men are on these channels there have been many times i've actually highlighted this because the page called no shame sales game discussed this and it was very obvious how some of the of us have highlighted men however because this is a shitty ass industry it is heavily dominated by women because many people have been trying to specifically prey on vulnerable women because that has been such a huge demographic with this i genius though is one that has women and men, it's a little bit different. All I gotta say though is, is I have been seeing some insane shit in regards to WFAB. And when they say any people that have enough time to hate don't have a fucking life. It's not hate, it's calling it, like, I don't know how else to explain it to these goofy asses. Like, it is common sense at this point with how much we've repeated ourselves with this. They do not choose to listen, honest to God, because they've seen our videos. They know what we're talking about, but they choose to ignore it. Just, they will do anything to get attention. They will do, like, literally, like, let's think about this logically here. Who is genuinely watching WFAB all the time outside of their downlines? Really, I've proven that in regards to their engagement. Majority of people that engage with their platforms are people that are in their downlines or in regards to the company that they're part of, or if anything, other MLMers for that matter. It is hardly anyone that's actually legitly outside of it or anything for that matter for this for example 
Majority of people that are watching are not watching to support you at all. They are not watching to give you business. They are watching to see what the hell you're doing and make a final decision from that. And I've been able to hear many, many great things about how people learned about the shitty stuff in regards to WFAB and they didn't join. And they were able to make an educated decision. I'm sorry, but the concept of we bring so much business to them. Really? Then why is your engagement shit? I, I'm so sick of them. When the hell will they crash and burn and just not exist on platforms anymore? They're so fucking embarrassing. It's unreal. So that was it for today's video. Comment down below what you guys thought. And and yeah, we'll stay tuned for next week because I'm sure that is going to be the biggest dumpster fire on this planet. So thank you so much for watching. I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.